Well, everybody, welcome back. Uh, so another build video, uh, no driving video, no autocross, no track days. We're gonna build. And actually, we're gonna talk about aero. So I wanna reach out to first uh, Team Dark Horse Racing. Uh, he's got the GTM Factory 5. Uh, they race Trans Am Series. We hooked up with them yesterday. By the way, happy Father's Day. Today's Father's Day, even though this video won't be up today. Probably be a few days before I get it up. Um, but we hooked up with them in Indianapolis uh, yesterday, Saturday, and got to see uh, some serious, cool Trans Am racing. Um, and so then Brian from Team Dark Horse Racing and I and his crew chief did discuss aero on the coupe, what we can do to make it better. So uh, thanks again, Brian, and your hospitality out there. It was awesome. And uh, I'm going to kind of talk about the aero we discussed here and see if we can make the aero on this car better. So let me get this thing up on jacks. And I'm going to show you where I think the big trouble spots are on the nose of this car and see what we can do to fix them and make them better. Because I think this car can be improved a lot. And one of the things I've got here is some of this conveyor belt material. Um, and I got a piece of metal here. And I'm going to show you what my thoughts are. And uh, I may give it a shot and we'll go from there. So follow along. Let me get it up on jacks. And we'll uh, discuss it a little more in a few minutes. Thanks. So those are the cars here. So air is going to get jammed in through here. I hope you guys can see this well. So I'll back off. So air is going to come in through here. It's going to hit... And this is where hold on here. I got a headlight on too, so I get this extra light for you guys. Air's gonna come into the car here and underneath the nose. As it comes in here, it's gonna hit the condenser and the radiator. And that's a high pressure zone now because your blockage, it's not gonna flow right through easily. Just not, because you got all these coils, you got all this space. It's gonna drive air downward, okay? Um, air is gonna follow the path of least resistance, of course. So as it drives the air downward, it's then gonna hit my plate. So you can see my plate here, create a high pressure zone again there, because it can't go underneath because it's up against this bottom. Um, and then drive the rest of it down underneath the car. I mean, some of it's gonna get through the radiator, no doubt about it. But as you can see here, it's gonna then go underneath the car. Once it goes underneath this car, then it's flat underneath for the most part, but there's a lot of big open gaps. It's gonna get up into there and do all sorts of crazy crap. I can plate off flat bottom the car, which would help, um, no doubt about it. But uh, Dave tried that on his, and his oil temps climbed pretty high because he blocked it all off, and then the oil pan doesn't get any coolant across that. Uh, so he yanked it all back off, said it's not worth it. So what I'm thinking of doing, I'm going to weld a plate, a small tab from here all the way across which will help strengthen this really thin 1 8 inch metal and then I'm going to bolt this this conveyor belt material up here at a slight angle this way which will create a higher pressure zone in front of and below the radiator which could drive more air through the radiator okay and allow a less of amount of air coming underneath here to go underneath because what's happening too is the air here that's not going through here is going underneath the car and also hitting right across here, creating another weird turbulent. So you've got air coming down the front of the condenser and radiator. You've got air coming this way. This is all just a turbulent mess. Um, the ideal setup would be to plate from here to the nose, but the nose has got to swing up. So I'm actually debating on trying to make something to go from here to just underneath the nose. Um, and that way you could actually can close this and then I think you could probably close this whole radiator opening um, and I may even play with this trying to put cardboard over the front with tape and see how much how big does the nose opening really need to be to be aero uh, oh, sorry about that so one of the reasons I'm doing this is I'm going to be doing the Silver State Classic in September and that's out there in the Nevada desert um, and I'm going to be in the 140 mile an hour groups. This car is going to hit a max of 140 miles an hour and cruise at 120, 125. I want this thing to be sticking to the road, no big deal, not be floaty. Um, I think the top of the body on the car aerodynamically is really good. Um, I think it's, it does a pretty good job aero on the top of the car. It's this bottom nose that's a mess. I'm going to put this back on just so I can show you some of the issues we run into and some of the things I'm going to do to fix it, or at least attempt to fix it. So just so you know, I'm not an aero guy. I took a, a class of fluid dynamics in college, uh, engineering, and I'm in the aviation industry, but not my world. Um, so I'm thinking this here, that'll keep air from going underneath the car as much, and then run it down the sides like this. 
That'll keep it there. And then on this tube back into here, run more this way. That'll keep a bunch from going underneath the car, which is really, really important. The less area you can get underneath the car, the better. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this whole mess here. I may even make a plate and come out and then put more here. I'm not sure, we'll mess around with that a little later. Um, so I don't know about that one yet, but I'm gonna weld this plate across, drill a whole bunch of holes in here. I'm gonna bring it to full width here. That's kind of my goal. And then like I just said, I'll probably weld something onto here later just to fill in that gap. Because this here is an arrow mess too. There's a whole bunch of crap going on here. And that arrow's catching this straight in here, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, my issue is said is I want to be able to open the hood. I don't want to change the arrow on the car. I don't want to change the external appearance on the car. Um, I know that factory five, probably if you bought, I'll turn this light off. If you bought the factory five race nose, I think that cleans up the arrow a lot. First of all, what it does do, it closes this in, makes the nose opening smaller. No doubt about that. Um, and then it definitely drops it down and then kicks it back further. But you can't open the nose, which I don't like the idea of that. And it changes the, the original look of the car, which is what I don't want to do. I do not want to change the original look of this car. I want the car to look original. I mean, have the same body style. I don't want to turn it into a race car. So I'm trying to find the best of both worlds. I'm gonna try this. I can always cut the brackets off, pull this stuff back off, this, this conveyor belt material if I had to. But I'm gonna play around with it a little bit. A little bit of work, see what I get. Um, and then maybe what I'll do is get some yarn down here, some video, drive it, I don't know. As I said, I'm gonna play around with this a little bit. I just think there's a lot of cleaning up. I think a modern car is way more aerodynamically efficient into the radiator opening and all that because they close it off. They create that high pressure zone out into here, which then forces it around the car, underneath the car, and to the sides of the car. This thing does not do that. It's just jamming it back in there and going nowhere. So uh, I'm gonna play around with this. I bought some of this metal here. So I'm gonna measure this, sorry about that. This metal here, I'm gonna measure this out pre-drill a whole bunch of holes, tap them for 1032s. So when I put the conveyor belt material in there, I can just screw it in with 1032 button heads. Fairly smooth, fairly straightforward. And uh, then I can always cut these. I'm just gonna stitch well a few pots. I can always cut it back off if I ever want, not want it on there. So let's get it going. I will, don't show you any welding, cutting, all that. I'll just kind of show you as I get close to being done what we're dealing with. But uh, so this whole video is going to be about arrow, arrow, arrow. So thanks again, and uh, let me get, get going. Let me show you what I've got going here. So I took this piece of metal. I drilled and tapped all these holes, as you can see. Um, let me get away from that. So you can see all the holes. This will actually fit across the front. And then I matched this up. So this is going to bolt onto here with just uh, button head screws. So now I'm going to get up underneath the car and... Uh, we're gonna attack this in a couple spots and bend it to the right angle. Cause you definitely don't want it straight up and down. We want it angled forward a little bit to kind of keep that high pressure zone and not have the air bleed up underneath. So let's get underneath there. We'll uh, attack in a couple of spots, get the welder going and uh, go from there. I've now got the bracket welded up. So I'm gonna screw uh, just a little bit of that uh, conveyor belt material onto that bracket and then get the angle I want and then we'll finish welding it. Right now it's just tacked so I can still bend it back and forth. And then we'll stitch weld about every three inches all the way across. So, uh, and this is actually just even with the lowest point of the car. So not bad, if this takes a shot, I'm okay with it because it's still gonna protect the radiator. I've now got it all bolted up. So you see I welded on the bracket, this bolts up. I don't know if this is gonna be stiff enough. This is not that thick, I think it's 1 8 I may have to go to thicker conveyor belt material, which is not a problem, I can do that as well. It's just, I don't know, I mean, I push on it, it starts bending over, so I don't think it's gonna be stiff enough. I don't wanna run aluminum or anything, because this is gonna get hit. Uh, this is gonna be by an inch off the ground, but it should do very well to at least clean up the center part of the car. I said, then I'll start working down the sides and maybe on this nose later, you know, with another strip across here, but I don't know, that might be too noticeable. Let me get it on the ground. I'll let you guys look at it on the ground and then we'll go from there. So, uh, but yeah, you can see how I've done this. So, let me drop it on the ground. We'll see where we end up. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get up underneath here. So hopefully everybody, you can see what I've got going on here. I mean, I gotta get the light under here. So you can see now, it's about an inch and a half, since I angled it forward, about an inch and a half off the ground. Um, 
but that should clean it up. Give me a high pressure zone in front of the radiator instead of it jamming it up underneath. This might just work, so we're gonna play around with this for a little bit, but uh, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna put this up as an episode, and then we will get, hold on. The arrow is done for right now, so let me show you what I've done, and then hopefully we can get your thoughts and opinions, because uh, right, wrong, and different, I don't know. So here's what I've done. Let me climb underneath. <laughs> so, Taking this off the front of the radiator, hopefully you guys can see this. Um, this hopefully will build more high pressure in front of the radiator, drive air up and through instead of letting it drive off of the radiator through the nose and go under the car. So that's my hope, don't know. And then what I've done is I've made these side skirts here that go down and terminate back up into here on both sides. Let me show you the other side just so you kind of get an idea of what we're talking about here. Um, so you can see what I've done. So I'm trying to keep as much air from underneath the car as possible. And then what I'm also going to do, I'll get up underneath the car. So this area here where the battery sits, I'm going to actually close this aluminum probably about halfway back or maybe to the front edge of the motor. So the oil pan will still get air across that because I said Dave tried bottom and flat bottom, the whole bottom of his car. Oil temps went quite a bit higher. Uh, you just got to have airflow across that oil pan. So, and then we'll kind of go from there, but uh, I don't know, all right, wrong. I mean, you're still gonna get air up into here, which I could start closing off some of this stuff, but I don't wanna get too carried away here. I'm just trying to help the car out a little bit, whether it needs it or not, I don't know. Um, but this is the worst part. I think this is where, you know, air's coming under the nose, coming through the nose. It's just, the arrow on this car is not like a modern automobile. Oh, by the way, here's where you can see my off-track excursion damage underneath the nose. And there's actually over here, if you can see this chunk of fiberglass missing so yeah i caught it pretty good oh actually it's cracked a little bit right here wow yeah i didn't notice that i think i've actually got a crack in the glass right there so i caught it pretty good up there uh probably way worse than i thought but it's bottom of the nose we'll fix this up when we go to re-clear the nose so uh, i think we'll throw this thing up so and what another thing i'm trying to do if you look a lot of modern cars take air in from the bumper and then they root it into the wheel well. They say they're trying to get it to come out the side of the car, which then causes more laminar flow down the side. I don't know. Uh, they call them air curtains. I don't know if that's good, bad, and different. As I said, the skirt in the bottom should help get more air up into here and out through the wheel wells. These wheel wells are pretty wide open, so I don't think it'll be an issue. Um... So I'll throw this video up because I want to get some thoughts. Hopefully we got some good aerodynamic guys that watch this video and can say, hey, you're, you're an idiot. Take that crap off, which is fine. If that's the deal, then I'll pull all that stuff off. It's all screwed on. Uh, the front one's well that I would weld a bracket on, but no big deal. That just protects the radiator. So let me know what you think. Give me some comments. Appreciate it. Hit subscribe, and hopefully uh, this thing works. Thanks.